So Dave here again. Um, I've had a few requests after my video about the electric car on um, on how the CAN bus works in the RX-8 and um, or what CAN bus is, how it works, how I got the codes and how I've made the dashboard work with the all the systems in the car. Um, I won't go into too much detail about CAN bus itself. You're best off just doing a wiki on it. Um, that'll tell you pretty much all you need to know. Um, but this video is just going to be a little bit about how I read the information really to decode how the RX-8 works. Um, this little device here, it's an Arduino. You'll see these kind of referenced a lot online. Now this isn't just an Arduino, it's um, actually got a CAN bus shield on it as well. So that's what the 9-pin serial port is on the end. It's got the Arduino chip and a CAN bus shield built into one. Um, I'll put a link below. Um, to Hobby Electronics where this came from. You can see the website there. Um, these actually, they used to make them um, and you got them made, but um, recently they've, they've been in component form and I've had to actually send them to a local company to solder it all together. Not sure whether they're gonna start making them again made, but these are really handy because it's an Arduino and CAN bus all in one. Don't have to have two devices uh, and really useful. Other thing you're gonna need is a cable to connect the car's uh, ODB connection to the serial port of the uh, CAN bus on the on the uh, Arduino CAN bus shield you've got. So this plugs into the, all cars have one of these, kind of a diagnostic port or whatever you want to call it. On the RX-8, it's under the front here. Uh, if we get underneath, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to show you that. Yeah, there it is. It's cool as day. Oh. There. CAN bus. Uh, sorry, the ODB connector there. And it's just a simple matter of plugging in That, that gives me my, my serial connector now. If I take the Arduino, plug it in, there you go, job done, simple as that. So what I'll do next is I'll show you some code for actually reading the canvas and how to diagnose what you're seeing on that um, and the messages and the bytes of information so you can do this on any car and then you can use this exact same setup to diagnose the CAN bus on any car if you wanted to take the engine out um, and replace it with an electric motor you're gonna have to do a very similar thing so got my laptop here um, my Arduino's plugged in uh, you can see the little light on it at the moment that's I like to make my Arduino code light that light up on the Arduino when, I, when it's running just tells me that it is actually running at the moment uh, if I send the code back to the Arduino again it will go out when it's uploading it there we go so that's the laptops now uploading the new code and when the Arduino gets that code the light will come back on again because you know it's done and it's running um, great thing about the Arduino is it will simply just take the code and run and it'll run and run and run and run and run until it hasn't got power anymore so that right now is sat waiting for CAN bus from the car, any CAN bus signals, and it will tell me what those signals are. If I come over to the monitor here, I don't know if that's in focus or not, there we go. Um, so I've got good to go, that's my code just saying me it's ready to go, and if I turn the ignition on in the car, it's going to go a bit ape. <laughs> You're just going to get an absolute ton of noise. Um, so I'll turn that off. Essentially, what that is, is um, we have in decimal here, uh, 212, which is the um, the code. So CAN bus sends uh, a control code, uh, basically who sent that bit of information, and then up to eight bytes after that. So 255, 255, 255, 52, 64, 80, naught. Uh, these other things are times uh, and, and just miscellaneous information that I might remove for the code just to make it a bit simpler for people to use. Um, all you have to do from here is copy this and paste it into something like Excel. It then becomes a lot more readable, a lot more usable. You can do things like then put a pivot table on it and find all the control codes uh, that your CAN bus is sending out. CAN bus is just a noisy protocol. Every device will be sending out what it wants to send out. Nothing will acknowledge that. Nothing will say thank you for that information. Please send something else. They'll just keep screaming. So your wheel speeds will just keep sending what their wheel speed is. Nothing will ever acknowledge that. But other things on the CAN bus will be listening and using that information for for lighting up lights, ABS, and all the bits and pieces. And um, so this is where you start. And you get your codes. And um, first thing to do is really drive the car 
whilst your Arduino is collecting information so you can collect as many codes as you can. Um, it's good to keep maybe a potential a bit of a log of what you did when you put the throttle down, when you steered left, when you steered right. Um, so you can start to build a picture of all the things it might be doing. And, um, and I'll show you in Excel next of, uh, of how I start to diagnose that information. So I've got my data here in Excel. Um, just reviewed the video I took a minute ago and um, just want to clarify a couple of things. I said that the header ID sent out on the CAN bus is, sent, uh, is, is an indicator of what sent it. Um, it's not. The header is actually just indicative. It tells you of what that packet of information is. Um, so take here 1201. I just know from experience with the car now that that is actually the wheel speed of the four wheels. Um, 1201 is not the device that sent that out um, it's actually just telling you what the information contained within it is so just clarify that point there because i didn't want everybody looking at this then and going crikey look at all the different things that are sending information out it's actually only probably half a dozen things sending information at any one time um, other thing to clarify as well, I mentioned a couple of times that it's my code. I kept saying it's my code uh, for reading the CAN bus. Um, I'll be honest, it's a hybrid of code. Some of it I have pulled offline. Uh, oh, sorry, I have pulled off online. Um, some of it is my code that I've amended. Uh, the CAN bus stuff for the RX-8 that I'll get to is a majority of my code. Uh, but this code that you probably saw in the last video just a minute ago um, is bits and pieces from everywhere. So apologies if anybody sees any code that they think they've seen online. Don't want to take credit for anything that's not mine there. Um, and if anybody has any problems with stuff that's there, just let me know and I can change it as needs be. Um, but anyway, coming back to this data, I've got columns A to J. These are the columns I've just taken out of uh, my Arduino. Um, and as I mentioned a minute ago, the first uh, bit of information or the first byte of information is an ID code. Um, it's in decimal. Uh, as you see, lots of decimal numbers there. Uh, the second bit of information is the length of the packet of information. So there it's four bytes, and then you'll see one, two, three, four, C, D, E, and F, uh, four bytes of information. Uh, code 530 is seven bytes of information, da -da 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 -da. and so on. So each one will have a header of what the information is and how long it is, and then the information itself. So the information itself is bytes, so uh, bytes of information, each byte being eight bits, so basically naught to 254. Um, and can represent anything. It really can get quite deep and technical, which we'll probably cover in another video. This one's just really simply about how to start to diagnose this and how you can break this information down. Um, I've added a column over here on L, which is just use the Excel formula decimal to hex. Um, just you do see a lot of stuff online um, and it can be just easier to look at um, having the decimal header codes in hexadecimal. Um, so I've just put those there as hex, just to cross-reference things, because there is a lot of information online, so other people will have them as hex codes, um, and you can see the hex codes here to marry them up as needs be. I've kind of got used to working in the hex IDs, um, so they're the kind of the things that I know. Again, the 4B1 is wheel speed, for instance. Um, 4B0 is wheel speed plus 10,000. Don't ask me why they have two, one 10,000 higher than the other, um, but they do. Uh, and so on. So next thing to do in Excel here to really start to break this information down is Excel has a awesome feature uh, under the data tab for filter. And what it does, it just puts a filter at the top of each column um, and you can then basically pick out the codes. So if I select A here, I then have a list of probably only about 15 codes. Um, starts to make it a little bit more manageable. Um, when you look at it all in Excel, it kind of blows your mind. When you go, well, actually, there's only 18 codes or so here. Uh, it's it's not, such a, not such a bad thing after all. Um, so let's take the uh, 1201 wheel speed uh, that we know that that's what it is. Um, let's just scroll down. If I select, now, select all none, and if I just select 1201 on its own, we very quickly just see wheel speed. Now this data is taken from a car that was then driven. So if I scroll down and keep going, here we go. We start to get some data. Um, and these are now the wheel speeds of all four wheels. Uh, C and D are one wheel, E and F, another wheel, G and H, uh, third, I and J, the fourth. Um, not actually sure the 
order of them. Um, I think I did see it online somewhere, which wheel is which. Um, they obviously stay within a very close proximity of each other in terms of their wheel speed because you're rolling along. I guess if you really wanted to get very technical on here, you could check the wheel speeds out against each other and see if you've got any slip or wheel spin. I think that's kind of beyond most EV projects that people are doing. Now, these two, uh, the two very the two bytes for each information are um, basically high and low hex. So I've got C here is um, the high bytes with D being the low bytes. I've quickly just made some changes here to this Excel just to explain how the high byte and low byte works. Um, if you imagine a byte is eight bits of data, your high byte and low byte are one value 16 bits long. Um, if you don't know about your binary and hex and how all that works, then simple matter is your high byte times it by 256, add it to the low byte. <laughs> so I've done that over here, little formula, times by 256, add the low byte and um, just copied that across for each of the four wheels. So over here, very quickly, just copied and pasted that. Um, it records the speeds in hundredths of a kilometer an hour. So 206 is two kilometers an hour. You can see there it's so three kilometers an hour, four kilometers an hour, five kilometers an hour, six kilometers an hour, and so on. Um, and as the car's going along, you can see it gets up to the dizzy heights of 24. It's quite interesting here looking at this, the wheels aren't all spinning at the same speed. Um, don't know why that is, I'll be honest with you. I don't know whether that's a, a differences in different cars or whether that's a problem with the sensors on this car. Who knows? But um, the, the, the wheel sensors feed into the ABS system, which then pumps out this packet of information 1201, and that's where this then gets put on the can. It would flag if it had a problem with the wheel sensors because you get the ABS light on the dashboard um, if there's any problems, so it's happy as Larry. But this is where you could immediately, if you wanted to, use the Arduino to intercept these messages to then update the speedo on the dashboard. Um, so start to build a picture here of what's going on. But of course, when you first come to this, you're not going to know that. So it is simply a matter of picking these and looking at them. It doesn't sound very exciting. And it isn't, <laughs> but you soon learn that it's nowhere near as daunting as you first look. When you first look and you have a huge amount of data, when you break it down and go, well, I've only actually got, you know, 15 different codes, write them down, look at one. I'm looking at uh, 81 here. Um, I happen to know that 81 is, um, I believe, the steering angle. Um, and um, you can look here and you can see the values change as the steering wheel is moved. Um, and of course, that's where it comes back to what I mentioned earlier, that as you're doing things in the car, just make a mental note while you're recording. So, yeah, I steered the wheel left, steered the wheel right. And if you start to see some kind of uh, comparisons whereby the data is changing in the way that the things that you're doing in the car, then um, go back and do it again. Record it again, make the change deliberate and look at the data. And bit by bit, you'll start to build up a picture and going, yes, that's, that's when I changed this. That's when I put the hazard lights on. That's when I braked. That's when I accelerated. Um, it can be tedious, but it's also you start to realize that things like this column here on E is 254. And it, it never changes. Um, there's lots of stuff like that going on. You see lots of things that are counters that just count up and count down and aren't really related to anything that we need to know. And you can just eliminate all them. You start to just build a picture of what's going on. Um, the other thing that I did was remove parts of the car. So I took a load of data. I then removed the ECU, or just unplugged it, and see what data I've got. Um, you soon learn that, well, actually, the data that's now not on the can anymore must have been being sent by the ECU. Um, same with the ABS. Remove the ABS. Ah, there's stuff missing. So you kind of, again, build a picture up of what's going on. When you remove the ABS, uh, you suddenly don't get the wheel speeds. And you're like, well, okay, build a picture up. Um, it, there are some oddities with that, though. When you move, when you remove the ABS, there's no ABS on the system anymore to send error codes out that the ABS isn't working. So the ECU realizes that and starts sending out the ABS's canvas signals for errors. So, you know, it's not all straightforward, but um, in majority of it, it is. And uh, bit by bit, you can work out what's going on on the can by just hard work and, uh, and back and forth from the car, taking data, diagnosing it, taking some more, 
and uh, you'll build a picture up. It's also worth listing a, a list of things that you're looking for. You know, what things are you, what you do you want? Um, things like temperatures, speeds, um, revs, throttle pedal positions. Make a list of things you actually want because there's lots of information you're not going to want. Um, so there's no point looking for it or trying to work out what it is. Um, find the stuff you need and, uh, and go hunt. Just two more things I thought I'd mention before I sign this video off. Um, first one is uh, don't be afraid to connect the CAN bus and actually look at the codes live. So you can sit in the car. I keep saying about taking the codes and taking them away and diagnosing them, but it can also be very handy to place a filter in the code. So instead of the CAN bus displaying all the codes that it sees, just get it to display code 81, for instance, and that's the steering wheel angle, and sit in the car, steer the, steer the wheel left, steer the wheel right, and you should see live the values change. Um, that's another very good way of telling um, that you're looking in the right area for the right kind of code, uh, and that works for everything from throttle pedals to indicators to all, all kind of bits and pieces, error lights that you can get come up. Um, and the second one is I'm put another link below to a really useful document which shows the eight different control systems in the rx 8 CAN bus um, and it shows you the eight systems, what is sending out and what is receiving in. Um, best just have a look at the document that explains everything, but it's really handy for you to know what things are sending out um, and what they're receiving in. It doesn't give you any codes for the CAN bus, but starts to give you a bit of a lead in what the uh, traffic and where the traffic is coming from. I'm um, going to make another video after this one just about the RX-8 CAN bus and its codes and the Excel I've got of information about that and just talking you through uh, what all the codes are that I have found for the RX-8. I'm going to save you a ton of time for if you are wanting to diagnose the CAN bus for the RX-8. Hopefully this video has been helpful for just diagnosing CAN bus in general. Um, if you do subscribe below, then obviously you'll get a notification when my next video is ready. Should hopefully be in a couple of days and um, I'll have that up. Thank you very much.